Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, my father. Wow. What a privilege and what an honor it is to serve the King of glory. What a privilege and what an honor it is, Abba Yahuwah, that we can come and humble ourselves before your throne, just like the 24 elders, just like the living creatures that say, worthy, worthy, worthy is the one that was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the one that is worthy to be praised. There's no one like you. There's no one like the King of glory. There is no one like our Messiah, Yahushua. And Abba Yahuwah, I don't think there is enough words in our vocabulary to start to thank you for giving us your son, for coming in the person of your son in order to be able to dwell with us on the earth. I don't think there is enough words in this vocabulary in order to be able to start to thank you. And truly, all I know is that we would be like the 24 elders that would prostrate ourselves before you and say, thank you. And to say, worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. And we are excited because with every day that goes by, we are excited because more and more we're getting closer to the time of your coming. And so, Abba Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for the one that was worthy to open the scroll. The one that is, that scroll manifested in the flesh. The one that came to pave the way for us. The one who was the first fruits offering and now is going to raise up many first fruits from there. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I thank you. I thank you, my Father. I thank you for this book of revelation, for this book of revelation that we're truly coming to understand our Messiah. And today, may this chapter open up to us for us to understand that which the prophets have spoken, that which the prophets have said, that which we see now manifested in the flesh. Because he is the one that has come to open the scroll to understand the visions of that which has already been seen by the prophets but not being able to be understood. But the books have been sealed until you are the one that is opening the seals. And so they would not have been able to understand. They would not have been able to see because the lamb needed to come. The lamb needed to be slain so that the lamb would then be able to take the blood, to be able to take it to the Father, become the perfect offering so that now you are the one that comes as the conquering king because you first came as the lamb that was slain the one that has come to show us the way the one that is able to open those seals to open the book for us to be able to understand what is hidden within the pages of this book. And so you've laid a foundation. And now in chapter 5, you are 
exalting the only one who is able to come now and open the vision of this scroll so that we may understand fully that which has been shown to the prophets, that which has already been prophesied, but that which we have not quite understood. But I pray that by your grace, by your love, by your mercy, and by the seven spirits of Yahuwah, that this scroll will be open to us to understand the deeper meaning of the things that we need to understand unfolding before our very eyes to prepare for the conquering king to come. To judge the nations of the world and to gather unto himself a remnant bride that will rule and reign with him. And how, Abba, how we want to bow our knee and be counted faithful to be one of those. Whether we're going to be able to be one that's going to go through this or whether we're going to be one that's going to be slain as we will understand in the chapters ahead that we will have to be slain for your name's sake but that we will be counted worthy because you are worthy. And we want to be part of this priesthood that you are speaking about in this chapter to today. And so I praise and I thank you, Abba Yehua, that you would open up the mind of our understanding in order to be able to receive the deeper revelation of the one that has been counted worthy to open the scroll, Yahushua HaMashiach. We love you, our King. Amen. Praise our Father. As we embark on this chapter 5, It's so exciting to be able to just see how this book is unfolding itself. And today I just got so excited because I got such a revelation of my own to understand that, you know, we read things in the prophets, but we don't always know how to put everything together. You know, because when we read the prophets, you read a little bit here and a little bit there and you don't really know how to put everything together. But when everything starts coming together, it is amazing what the Father does. And that is why I am so excited because he's going to be able to bring some of the pieces of the puzzle together for us to understand this chapter. And what is he saying? And what does he mean by what he's saying? And so we are going to start in chapter 5 from verses 1. And it says, And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So who is in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne? Seated on the throne is Abba Yahuwah, seated at the right hand of the Father is spoken of. His son is seated at the right hand of the Father. Who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back. So, interesting. We are looking, and I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So, the, there's one sitting on the throne, and then there's on the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. This becomes a scroll. So what he's seeing is he's seeing not a person, but he's seeing a scroll. And so we go and we look before we continue. And it says, 
Okay, let's read it again. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside on the back, having been sealed with seven seals. So he's seeing a person, he's seeing a scroll. And so when we go look, we're first going to go look at Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29 from 9 to 11 and it says pause and wonder blind yourselves and be blind they are drunk but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink for Yahuwah has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep and he's closed your eyes the prophets and he has covered your heads, the seers. And the entire vision is to you like the words of a book that is sealed, which men give to one who knows books, saying, Read this, please. And he said, I am unable, for it is sealed. So you see, up until this time, the prophets are seeing. But yet, they seeing a book, they seeing a vision, but they do not understand the vision because it is sealed. The book is sealed. He's saying, and the entire vision is to you like the words of a book. So there's supposed to be an entire vision, but the vision is close to you, is uh, is like to you like a book that is sealed, which men give to one who knows books, saying, read this. So they sing this vision and they say, read this, please. And he says, I am unable, for it is sealed. So you see, there was a vision. And if you go and look, look in, uh, I'm not going to read the whole of um, chapter 29, but... It says in verse 6, you shall be visited by Yahuwah of hosts, verse 6, with thunder and earthquake and great noise and with a whirlwind and a storm, a flame of devouring fire. Then the crowd of the nation who fight against Ariel, even all who fight against her and her strongholds and distress her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. So you see, the prophet is seeing something. But yet at the end of the day, the father says, he's closed their eyes, he's put them in a deep sleep, he's closed their eyes because this book is going to be opened by a specific person. So he says, I am unable for it is sealed. So there is a book that is sealed. So they seeing things but not understanding what it's all about. So then if we're going to read in Ezekiel chapter 2, so again, understand, the prophets are seeing things. So we go to Ezekiel chapter 2, and now it says in verses 8, let's read from Ezekiel chapter 2 verses 8. Okay, so let's just read from verse 7. Okay, let's read from verse 6. And you, son of man... Do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though thistles and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words or discouraged by their looks, for they are a rebellious house. And you shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. So you see, a prophet is not concerned whether the people are going to take the words to heart or not. A prophet is just called to speak the word. Whether the people are going to have ears to hear, it's irrelevant. They are called to speak the word. And now from verse 8, And you, son of man, hear what I am speaking to you. Do not be rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I'm giving you. 
And I looked and I saw a hand stretched out to me and see a scroll of a book was in it. And he spread it before me and it was written on the inside and on the outside and written on it were lamentations and mournings and woe. So you see, Ezekiel is also not quite understanding, but he's got to eat the scroll. So he's being told, one is being said, I'm going to close the eyes, you're not going to understand, but this one, only the, the one who's going to open the scroll is going to be the one to open it. And this one of you is telling him, eat the scroll. And then you are going to have to prophesy as I tell you. So there is a scroll and it's written is lamentations and mournings and woe. So you must understand there's going to be woes. There's going to be lamentations. There's going to be mourning because there's great destruction coming from the scroll. But Ezekiel is told to eat it. And he says, and he spread it before me. And it was written on the inside and on the outside. So we will understand this inside and the outside. But yeah, Ezekiel was told to eat it. Then we go look at Daniel chapter 12. And Daniel chapter 12 is now when we're going to get closer to the time that we are now living in. And that is why for us to be able to understand um, a revelation, a lot of revelation is tied into to Daniel. And may the Father grant us the grace to be able to understand the simulation of these things that are going to tie into one another that we may understand because in the days and the weeks ahead and the months ahead that we may understand how these books will come in together. So let's read from Daniel chapter 12 from verse 1 because it's important for us to be able to lay a foundation in order for us to understand what is this chapter 5 of Revelation about. And it says, now at that time, Michael shall stand up and the great head who is standing over the son of your people. And there shall be a time of distress such as never was. Okay, so let's, let's see. So understand, he's talking about a time that is coming and this is what we must understand. This is prophetic. This is prophetic. So everything about chapter 12 is a prophetic utterance. So he's saying, And there shall be a time of distress, such as never was since there was a nation. So there's a time of distress like there never was. So remember, Yeshua talks about the great distress. There will be great distress upon the earth. Until that time, and at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. So, there is books, names written in books. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up. So, who, when do they wake up? Remember, when Yeshua is going to come, those that are asleep, that died in him in the tribulation, they are going to come alive. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth wake up, some to everlasting life and some to reproaches, everlasting abhor abhor abhorrence. So we must understand the books are going to be opened. It's spoken of in Revelation when the books are opened and then there's the judgment that's going to take place. There will be the great throne judgment that's going to take place. And those who have insight shall shine, shall shine, like the brightness of the expanse, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. So you see, what is it that we are supposed to be striving for? Remember what we said last week. Set apartness. How do we come into set apartness? You cannot come into set apartness without righteousness. So you see, this is where people go wrong. Because people are seeking your short. Listen to what he says. This is what he was sharing with me this morning. Abba was sharing with me this morning where he says, many people want to seek my kingdom. 
Many people will ask you, how do I know I'm in the Father's will? How do I know that, that what I'm doing is the Father's will? Now listen to what his, what his answer was to me. Because many come and they say, well, how do I know that this is the Father's will? How do I know that I'm doing this and it's the Father's will? How do I know that I'm in the Father's will? Now listen to what his word says. Seek ye first the kingdom of Yahuwah and his righteousness. Matthew. Seek ye first the kingdom of Yahuwah and his righteousness. And all these things that you're seeking for shall be added unto you. But what do we want to seek first? Do we really seek righteousness first? No, we want to seek everything else first. We don't really want to seek his, his kingdom. So you see, if you are about his kingdom, if you are about his purposes and plans, so you need to start coming to the Father as opposed to coming to him with all your selfish prayers and your selfish things, come to him and say, Father, what is on your heart for my life? What is it that you have that you are wanting me to be able to know so that I may be able to walk in that? Now, so thank the Father, he's so faithful because I still thought, Father, I didn't make a note of this because now I'm speaking out of what Father spoke to me this morning. It's not in my notes, but the Father's so faithful because he's just given me the scripture. Matthew chapter 6, from verse 33, what does he say? But seek first the reign of Elua and his righteousness, and all these shall be added to you. So you see, if you make a note of the two things that you're supposed to be seeking, you're supposed to be seeking his kingdom first. So what does his kingdom look like? His way, his way of doing things, his righteousness. So if you're going to seek his way, his righteousness, his way of doing things, his right rulings, his precepts, his ordinances, the things that he's already spoken as your foundational covenant, then you must understand everything else that you're going to need to pray about is already going to be added to you because he's putting everything into place. That's why he says, do not then worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow shall have its own worries. Each day has enough evil of itself. So you see, Matthew chapter 6 is already telling us to seek first the reign of the Lord. So you see, why did Jeremiah, why was he telling the people you're going into exile? Because they didn't want to keep the Father's way. It was all about themselves. They were going to the temple and they were offering him sacrifices, but all out of their own selfish gain, their own selfish ambition, all about self. Are we still about self or are we about him? Who are we about? Because he says, if you seek first the kingdom of Yahuwah and his righteousness, then you will start to come onto his path. Because listen to what he says. He says that the footsteps of a righteous person is ordered by Yahuwah. So guess what? There's the answer. There's the answer to know, am I then going to be in the will of the Father? Because when I'm seeking his kingdom, when I'm seeking his righteousness, then my footsteps are going to be guided by him. Because why? Because I'm now seeking his righteousness. So if we go look and see, we've covered this, but we're going to speak again. What is righteousness? Righteousness is observing divine laws. So we've got to come back to keeping the laws of the Father. Upright, virtuous, keeping the commands of Yahuwah. So what are his commands? You see, if I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing, then I don't need to worry about Am I in the will of the Father? Because you will start coming onto His will. And believe you me, you are still to pray about all things and say, Father, if this is not your will, then you will close the door, which He will very quickly do because He will guide your footsteps and you will soon know if this is of the Father or not. Your spirit will know because why? You're seeking His kingdom. Not about your own selfish ambitions but if what he's putting you in line with has to do with the fact that he's got a purpose and a plan so say for example 
you are a king in in the father's what he's called you to be a king and now he's putting you in the world and he says that you acquire the wealth he says he will give you the power to acquire wealth but that wealth is for the kingdom not just for yourself and then you will understand that you're seeking his kingdom because he's putting you in line to give you the authority, to give you the power to create the wealth, but that it's not just for yourself, but it will be for his kingdom, for his purposes and for his plans and for that which he wants to do. So you see, he says, keeping the commands of Yahuwah, innocent, faultless, whose way of thinking, feeling, acting is wholly conformed to the will of Yahuwah, being innocent and set apart, this is what Yahshua fulfilled. For he led us then, we will walk as he walked. So you see, that is the righteousness that is of the Father. And so this is what the Father wants. He wants a people. So it's going to be a kingdom that those who will turn many to righteousness. So what are we supposed to be doing? We are supposed to be a people that is turning people to righteousness. Because he says, Let's go back to Daniel. This is where we were. We were in Daniel chapter 12, verses 3. And those who have insight shall shine like the brightness of the expanse, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Because the Father is wanting those that will shine like a star to shine in the, in the darkness to lead many who are in darkness into righteousness, following Abba Yahuwah's righteous ways. But you, Daniel, hide the words of the seal, hide the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall diligently search and knowledge shall increase. So you see, Daniel is given a vision again. Daniel has been given an understanding of this which is happening now. Daniel is giving an understanding. Daniel was seen a vision. Daniel was given insight. But what is he told to do? Seal the book. Until the time of the end, many shall diligently search and knowledge shall increase. So you see, when is this time? When is this time? This is the time of the revelation of Yahushua because he's the only one who can open the seal of the book. So, then I, Daniel, looked and I saw two others standing on one, on this bank and on the river and on the other, on, and on that bank. And one said to the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river? How long until the end of these wonders? And I heard the man dressed in linen. Hmm, who is this man who was above the water of the river? And he held up his right hand and his left hand to the heavens and swore by him who lives forever that he would be for a time, for an appointed time, appointed times, half a time. And when they have ended scattering the power of the set apart people, then all these shall be completed. So you see, this is now where this scroll is going to be opened to understand what is going to happen in this times, times, half a time? Because this Bible from this book of Revelation is going to speak a lot about times, times, and half a time. And this is about the set apart people that are going to have to go through this times, times, half a time. And I heard, but I did not understand. So I said, my master, what is the latter end of these matters? So you see, who's he seeing? This man dressed in linen. Who is this man? Who is this man that has sealed up this books and is saying it's going to be sealed until the time of the end? Because he says there will be a time of the end and then all these will be completed. And so he says in verse 9, and he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are hidden and sealed till the time of the end. So you see, this revelation is only going to be opened now, in this time of the end, for us to understand the one, only the one, at his appointed time, is going to open the seal 
for us to know. It wasn't the time because Yeshua had not yet come. So that is why he's saying, Go, Daniel, for the words are hidden and sealed till the time of the end. So you see, it's only until the time of the end that this is going to be opened. Many shall be cleansed and made white and refined, but the wrong shall do wrong, and none of the wrong shall understand, but those who have insight shall understand. So in Daniel 33 to 35, if you look at 33 to 35, it says, And those of the people who have insight shall give understanding to many, and they shall stumble they shall stumble by the sword and flame, by captivity and plunder for days. So you must understand, there's those that are going to be teaching and giving insight, but there's plunder, there's destruction, there's all these things, because for the times, times, half a time, there's great things going on. And then he turns around and he says, and when they stumble, they shall be helped, a little help, but many shall join them by flatteries. And some of those who have insight shall stumble to refine them and to cleanse them and to make them white until the times of the end, for it's still for an appointed time. So you see, so the stumbling is good because it refines. So we're going to go through much persecution, much trials. Why? Because it's going to be preparing us. It's going to be equipping us for the days that are ahead. So you see, it's refining. What did we read in the church of Laodicea? The fire needs to come in order to refine so that we may stand in the time of destruction. And from the time that which is continual is taken away and the abomination that lays waste is set up is 1,290 days. And this is again three and a half years, times, times and half a time. Blessed is he who is waiting earnestly and comes to the 1,390 and 35 days. So you see, the one before talks about the 1,000. I haven't gone into this and, 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 and hopefully as we continue with the book of Revelation, I'm going to understand these things. But right now I do not understand these things. So he says... And 1,290 days. So this one is speaking in verse 11. And from the time which is the continual is taken away, the abomination that lays waste is set up is 1,290 days. Now he says, blessed is he who is waiting earnestly and comes to the 1,335 days. So you've got to go a little bit further because the other one was 200. This one is 335 days. But you go your way till the end and rest and arise to your lot at the end of the days. So we must understand that Daniel was also told to seal this book, the vision of the end. So we are seeing three different prophets that have had to see a scroll, a book, and being sealed, and being eaten. So now we go back to Revelation. Let's go back to our Revelation. And we are going to look at, continue to read, where it says, and I saw, verse 1 again, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll inside okay so what is this word inside this word inside is the word g2081 and it's the word for eso then eso then and eso then is from within the inside not so interesting because listen to what this actually means your soul inwardly from within <laughs> so that is why he's seeing the scroll He's seeing, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll. The scroll is inside the actual person because who is seated on the throne? Yahuwah and the scroll sitting at the right hand. So Yahshua, is it Yahuwah sitting on the throne? Yahshua sitting at the right hand and this is a scroll. 
and the scroll is inside. So you must understand, it's inwardly, it's the soul. So you see, the scroll was eaten by who? By Ezekiel. He had to eat the scroll. So this person not only has the authority to open the scroll, he, the scroll is about the person itself, the scroll that's going to be opened. He's the one who is going to be inwardly being part of the scroll, being one together with the scroll. So, if you see, it comes from G2080, 20, 20, and ESO means to within the, in, the internal inner man, the soul, the conscience inside. So you see, what is going to be opened is the conscience. It's this very conscience. Yoshua himself is going to be able to open up the actual conscience of everything that's going to take place. Everything that Yoshua is going to reveal. So it's not just a scroll. It's the inside. So because if we have a look and see, um, the, that scroll, that scroll, it means Biblion. It means a small book. It means a written document. It means a written book. So you see, who, who is this written book about? Who is this document about? Who is this small book about? Who is the scroll about? Only the one that has got the power to open it. Because why? He's the one who is the manifestation of the actual scroll. So we have a look at the back. Back means, so that's inside. So it says that on the inside and on the back. So the back is episthen, episthen, backside from behind on the back. So you see it's on the inside and even on the back. So it's everything from the inside, from the back is all the scroll. And so it comes from the origin of opus, which is to look at, to behold, to allow oneself to be seen, to appear. So you see, what is he doing? He is allowing himself to be open, to be seen, to be, to, to, to behold. So Yoshua's, so the back is allowing itself to be open, to be seen. It's on the inside. It's everything on the inside, the inner man, the soul and the conscience is what is inside. And it's being opened as to look at, to behold, to allow oneself to be seen, to appear. And that is the deeper understanding of this scroll And so we have a look where he says, and having been sealed with seven seals. Now, interesting, because sealed and seals is two different words. So the word sealed, so it says, and having been sealed, so that sealed is... Um, it's to uh, G2696, and that is to cover, to close up, to close with a seal, to seal closely. So you understand, this has been closed. Yeshua's revelation of his coming and of this whole revelation was all sealed. They understood it. They prophesied it. But it needed to be manifested. It needed to be behold. It needed to be um, to be seen. It needed to appear. And so, this sealed is to cover, to close up, to cl to seal closely. But then the seals is G four nine seven three. And that is a seal 
the seal placed upon books, a signet ring, a signet as fencing. So who is the signet ring? Who is then this seal? You understand? The seal upon books or protecting from misappropriation, a stamp impressed as a mark or genuineness. So you see, it says that having been sealed with seven seals. And those seven seals are the, the signet ring. It's the seal placed upon the scroll. And that on this scroll is seven seals. And so now we're going to have to understand what's going to be opened is going to open up a scroll of everything that the scroll is going to be about. Who is the scroll about? What is the scroll? Who is it reflecting? What is it reflecting? And so we read in verse 2, And I saw a strong messenger proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loosen its seals? So you see, who is worthy to open this scroll? Because this scroll has been sealed. This scroll has been closed. This scroll has been covered up. Who is worthy to open those signets, those seals placed upon, those marks that have been there, those stamps that have been impressed on those seals? Who is worthy to open those seals? Who? And this is what he's asking. And no one in the heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. So you see, no one is even able to look at it. Because you see, the one who is sitting on the throne, Abba Yahuwah himself, who can look upon the Father unless you come through the Son? You have to come through Yahushua. No one will see the Father unless they are in, what did we read in, in um, it says, without set-apartness, no one will see Yahuwah. So only the one who is set apart is the one who is able to see Yahuwah. So if we're not in the one who is set apart, and if we have not allowed ourselves to become set apart as he is set apart, how are we going to see Yahuwah? Who is the one? Because it says no one is able to look at it. And one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of Yehuda. All right. So who is the lion of Yehuda? Who is worthy to open the scroll? The lion of Yehuda. He says, one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Because now... I wept because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. So no one can read it. No one can open it. No one can even look at it. And now he's weeping and he says, See the lion of the tribe of Yehuda. So let's go look. Who is the lion of the tribe of Yehuda? Where does this come from? Because there's an origin of this. So we need to understand. Everything that we're doing is we're building the foundation to understand this scroll that must be opened. Because who is the scroll about and who? what is the scroll about? And this is what we need to see today. So let's go to Genesis chapter 49. Oh, how powerful this is. Now, when the Father does something, you know, that's why I say, we do ourselves such an injustice. When we read a little thing here and a little thing there, a little scripture here and a little scripture there, and we never really get the full understanding. But when we finally get the full understanding, wow! Then we understand that this word is a living word. It lives, it lives, it's a living word. Now, listen. Listen, because this morning, it, it absolutely blew me away to be able to read this. And so, we read from Genesis 49, 
from verses 9. When now it's talking about the 12 tribes, and now we've got the blessing, because if we read, um, you know, he says, this is now, Yaakov called his sons, and in verse 1, uh, 49 verse 1, he says, Yaakov called his sons and said, gather together so that I can declare to you what is to befall you in the last days. So, if he's saying in the last days, then we must understand whatever is written of here has got to do with the last days. So, we are at the moment looking at Joseph. And as we're going to work through Joseph, then eventually we're going to get to 49. And we're going to understand this powerfully because this is talking about the last days. So it's supposed to be talking about the tribe of Yehuda of the last days. So we're going to look at verse 9 because it's talking about Yehuda. Yehuda is a lion's cup. Wow, it's talking about a lion, a lion's cup. From the prey, you have gone up, my son. He bowed down, he crouched like a lion, and like a lion who does rouse him. So, he's going to, he has come like a lion cub. He came first as a lamb. But then he's going to come as the lion. But listen. The scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda. So Yehuda was given the scepter. And this is what we just saw in the last chapter, chapter 43 of Genesis, when Yehuda stands up in an authority and starts to speak to his father and even offers himself as a guarantee on behalf of his brother. And he raises up in an authority and speaks to his father Israel to say, Father, he's going to come back. And yeah, we see that Yehuda has been given a scepter. So listen to what he says. The scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda, nor an inscriber from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him is the obedience of the people, of peoples. Okay, so now we've got a backtrack. Let's go look at what is inscriber. What is inscriber? Because if we do not understand inscriber, we are not going to understand what's been spoken of here. And we are not going to understand the role of Yeshua. So listen carefully. And oh my goodness, from this is everything. Everything that the Father is trying to explain in chapter 5. Understand, listen. Inscriber is a lawgiver. This is the word for lawgiver. This means to decree, to set, to engrave, to portray, govern, inscribe, enact. In, important, you, 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 you make a note of that word, enact. What does it mean to enact? It means to play out. One who decrees a lawgiver something decreed, the law, to be inscribed, to enact, laws being cut in stone, man, laws being cut in stone is to enact, appoint, portray, print, set. So understand, he becomes the law that was made flesh. Understand, he was the word made flesh. The law was written on tablets of stone. But now, who becomes the flesh that dwells amongst us, that becomes the law in enactment? He enacts the law. He becomes the Torah in the flesh. You need to understand this so that you may understand what is going to play out in these last days for us to understand righteousness, 
they turned many to righteousness. Righteousness is coming back into ways of Torah. Yeshua is the fullness of Torah. And we need to understand that the Torah of the flesh was written on tablets of stone. But now he, come, he becomes the Torah of the spirit because he was the Torah that was made flesh. Okay, let's, let's just get this right. Let's just get this right so that we understand because you must understand. There is a Torah of the flesh which is the flesh of man that was written on tablets of stone that was broken that they were not going to keep. So Yeshua comes in enactment from the line of Judah. He comes as the line of, in the line of Judah, from the, that he comes in the line of the King David, the root of Jesse from David. And now he's going to become the Torah of the Spirit because he was the Torah made manifest in his flesh man, but his flesh man was totally without sin. So that now he dies, resurrects, seated at the right hand of the Father, and now by the Spirit of Yahuwah, the Spirit of Yahuwah now is the one who's going to be manifest within us. Yahushua is manifest in us by the Ruach, because it's Abba Yahuwah living in us by the Ruach. And now that the, the Torah has been written on the tablets of our heart, so that we may now be able to walk it out with no excuse, because listen to what this says, the scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda, nor an inscriber, the lawgiver, from between his feet, because Yeshua came to walk on the earth as flesh, and he becomes the Torah in the flesh, until Shiloh comes, Shiloh, the presence of Yehuda, made manifest in the flesh. Shiloh was the place where Father's presence dwelled. Yeshua was the presence of the Father made manifest flesh on the earth. And to him is the obedience of the peoples. Because why? The peoples are going to be obedient to who? To Yeshua, who comes from the tribe of Yehuda. He is the one that is spoken of here in Revelation, that he says that he is the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of David, overcame to open the scroll to loosen its seven seals. That's what we must understand. So that's what we're going to understand. So you see, now you having this being made open to you, we are understanding the scripture of the prophetic utterance that's of the end times because he's saying, this is what must happen in the last days. So in the last days, from the tribe of Judah is going to have to rise up one who's going to have the scepter, which is the one who's been given as the inscriber, the Lord giver, the one that's going to be the enactment, the one that is going to bring the decrees, the one that is going to be able to, the laws being cut off stone, that that stone then becomes the, law, the tablets that gets written on the tablets of our hearts, the one that is going to portray, the one that is going to be appointed, anointed, appointed, this is everything of what this inscriber means. So listen, binding his donkey to the vine, what did he come riding on? He came riding on a donkey and he was hailed as king riding on a donkey to the vine and his donkey caught to the choice vine. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. The far and let's see, where does it say? Father, remind me, where is it? John, John chapter 14. Is it John chapter 14? John chapter 15? Let me just quickly go there because we need to see this being made manifest because Yoshua, we remember, this is the revelation of Yoshua. 
So everything about what we're reading must reveal Yoshua. John chapter 15. I am the vine. My father is the gardener. So you see, who is the vine? Yoshua is that vine. He's the vine. And my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that bears no fruit is, takes, is, is taken away. And today, we are going to read that in our Jeremiah, in the studying of Jeremiah, is about having to look at the figs, and the figs are to produce fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that he bears more fruit. So he's the vine. So let's look and see what he says of you. Binding his donkey, Yeshua came riding on a donkey, hailed as king. And, the, and to the vine. So he is the vine. And his donkey's colt is the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine. And his robes in the blood of grapes. So you see, he was going to shed his blood for us. The grapes was when he sat at the table, drank the choicest grape juice and said, I am going as this as this, as this grapes is going to be trampled, he was trampled underfoot so that he could become that blood that was shed for us. And his garments will be dripped in blood. And when he comes, he comes with his garments dripped in blood as we're going to get later on in Revelation. I think it's in Revelation 19, I'm not sure. But his blood was shed for us. His eyes are darker than wine and his teeth whiter than milk. This is who? None other than speaking about Yoshua. Yoshua that's going to come from this tribe of Yehuda. This is what the, this, this is what Jacob is seeing in the future to this tribe of Judah that is going to come who? Yoshua. So now let's read the fullness of of how Yeshua has come to manifest this. And so we are going to read in Hebrews chapter 7. So we are painting, we have to paint a foundation here. With everything is a foundation. And we have to read difficult scriptures. Scriptures in Hebrews that sometimes I've read and I've said, My father... I don't understand anything of this because this just goes contrary to what I understand. But I don't want to read in between. I want to read from the beginning so that we may understand. So let's go and read Hebrews chapter 7 from verses 1. And it says, For this Melchizedek sovereign of Shalem, Salem, priest of the Most High, Alua, who met Avram, Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the sovereigns and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, his name being translated indeed, first sovereign of righteousness, righteousnesses, righteousness. So you see, this Melchizedek priesthood is a priesthood that is the sovereign of righteousness. Important that we understand, because what was it that we had to understand? that this is righteousness. And then also, sovereign of Salem, that is sovereign of peace. So you see, what is Yoshua? Yoshua, seek ye first the kingdom of Yoshua and his righteousness. And what is Yoshua? He is the sovereign of righteousness and he is the sovereign of peace, the sovereign of Shalom. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of the days nor end of life, but having been made like the son of Alua, remains a priest of all time. So you see, he's being told that this king of Salem, this Melchizedek priest, he had no father, he had no mother, he had no genealogy, yet he is the son of Alua. Who is that? Yeshua himself. Yet Yeshua was given a genealogy, but we have to see him as being the priest of the Melchizedek order, the priest of the priesthood, because this is what we have to understand in this chapter. We have to understand that he's the first priest. 
He is the king of kings that is going to be able to open a scroll to unfold a, a vision to raise up a priesthood. This is what we're going to understand. Now see how great this one was to whom even the ancestor Abraham gave a tenth of the choicest booty. And truly those who are of the sons of Levi who received the priesthood. So remember, the priesthood was given to the sons of Levi. Have a command to receive tithes from the people according to the Torah, that is, from their brothers, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. However, the one whose genealogy is not derived from them receives tithes from Abraham and blessed the one who held the promises. So understand, this king of Salem is not from the priesthood that is not coming from the priesthood of Levi, yet he's receiving tithes and he's receiving offerings. However, Okay, now it says, and it is beyond all dispute that the lesser is blessed by the, by the better. And here it is men who die that receive tithes, but there is, one, there is someone of whom it is witnessed that he lives. One who might say that through Abraham, even Levi who received tithes gave tithes, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Okay, so who met with Abraham, the son. Now listen. Now from verse 11 it gets interesting. Truly then, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people were given the Torah, why was there still need for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? So we must understand, Yoshua raises up in the order of Melchizedek. He comes from the lion, he comes from the tribe of Yehuda. But remember, his mother is still coming from the tribe of Levi because her, her, her uh, cousin Elizabeth is from the tribe of Levi. Married to a Levi, which is where we get John the Immerser, that he is the one who anoints and immerses Yoshua in the water. Yoshua goes through his baptism through Yohanan, which rightfully would have been the true high priest in that day. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. So you see, as the priesthood now, because the Levitical priesthood is now, it had become corrupt anyway. As it is, it wasn't going to come, it was going to come a Zadok priesthood. Eventually the father was wanting to go through the Zadok priesthood. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. For he whom this is said belongs to another tribe, from whom no one has attended as at the slaughter place. For it is perfectly clear that our master arose from Yehuda. So you see, our master arose from Yehuda, a tribe about which Moshe never spoke of concerning priesthood. So you see, that's why now we must understand what priesthood is Yahushua. And this is clearer still. If another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, so you see, Melchizedek was not in the line of Levitical priesthood. But we must remember that Yahushua still came from the tribe of Levi through his mother. But through his father, he comes from Yehuda, who has become not according to the Torah of fleshly command. So you see, listen, who has become not according to the Torah of fleshly command, but according to the power of an endless life, which is what I said to you. It's not the Torah of the flesh where you are going to have to sacrifice all these animals in order for us to be in, reinstated and made right before the Father. But he came in the Torah of the Spirit. You must understand. 
because we want to be able to do away with Torah. It's the Torah written now on the tablets of the heart by the Ruach HaKodesh according to Ezekiel chapter 36 from verses 25, 26, 27 thereabout. Not going to go read there now. For he does witness, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And this is in Psalm 110 verse 4. For there is indeed a setting aside of a former command because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Because understand, they sent prophet of the prophet of the prophet of the prophet. And what did they do to every prophet? They killed every prophet and every prophet told them to do what? Return back to the Torah. Return back to the commands of Yahuwah. But they were unable to do it because that Torah was written on the tablets of stone and he wanted to write it on the tablets of their heart when it was already given to them on Mount Sinai but they are the ones that stopped him they are the ones that said no 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 you speak to Moshe and then Moshe speaks to us but he was already wanting to be able to write that Torah on the tablets of their heart those commands were to be engraved in their hearts and that is why the first set of tablets was broken because he knew they were going to break it. So the first set of tablets was broken. And the second set of tablets was put in the Ark of the Covenant. Um, that's right, in the Ark of the Covenant. Why? Because now those that are going to come into the Holy of Holies, they are going to be those, only those that come into the Holy of Holies are those that have written Torah on tablets of heart because they are walking out the fullness where their hearts, where their lives become the very ark that carries the presence of Yahuwah. For the Torah perfected not but the bringing in of a better expectation through which we draw near to Alua. So you see, these are the difficult scriptures because if you read the scripture on itself and it says, for the Torah perfected not, you're going to say, oh my goodness, what is he talking about? The Torah that was perfected not, that was the Levitical priesthood. That was that what was given by the Levitical priesthood that profited nothing because it was of the flesh and the flesh didn't obey it because it was never written on as a, the spirit never written it, wrote it on the tablets of their heart. So they were given it on tablets of stone and then every time the prophets came to tell them to keep it and every time that they would keep breaking it until eventually what does he do? He brings his son. So now listen to what he says. And it was not without an oath, for they indeed became priests without an oath, but he became priest with an oath. So when Yahushua became priest, he became priest with an oath by him who said to him, Yahuwah has sworn and shall not regret, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So you see, Melchizedek is still living. Because where did this Melchizedek come from? He didn't have a genealogy. Listen to what it says in verse 3. It says, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of the days nor end of life, and having been made like the son of Alua, remains a priest forever, or remains a priest for all time. So now Yahushua comes as that priest forever for all time in the order of Melchizedek in that bloodline. And now he says, by as much as this Yoshua has become a guarantor of a better covenant. So he becomes the guarantor of a better covenant. He's the one who brings a better covenant now. And indeed, those that became priests were many because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. You see, because he remains forever, his priesthood is going to be unchangeable. Because if you allow him to be fully in you, you become that priest, his priest. Therefore, he is also able to save completely those who draw near to Alua through him, 
ever living to make intercession for them. Wow. Do you, do you see how this is all playing out to understand who is this one opening the scroll? I need you to understand. This is not just somebody, not just... I, you need to understand who your Messiah is and you need to understand what your Messiah has done. Because when you understand who your Messiah is, what your Messiah has done, then you understand what you walk in. You understand the one who lives within you. You understand that he is the one who's gone ahead. You understand the one who's got to lead you. You understand that this is not of your flesh. Seek ye first the kingdom of Yahuwah and his righteousness. Seek him. And when he is the one who takes you and leads you by the hand, when you are totally and utterly submitted and surrendered to him, he's the one who's going to do this for you because he's already done it. Now listen to what he says. But he became, but he, but he, because he remains forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, he's also able to save completely those who draw near to Elua through him, ever living to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest. This is our high priest. I need you to understand. He is your high priest. Kind, innocent, undefiled, having been separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Do you see? He was without spot. He was without wrinkle. He was without sin. He was the perfect lamb that was slain who does not need, as those high priests, to offer up slaughter offerings day by day for his own sins and then for those of the people. For this he did once and for all when he offered up himself. So you see, he's already offered up himself. Now he makes an intercession for us day and night on our behalf so that we may walk it out. For the Torah appoints a high priest appoints as high priests men who have weaknesses, but the word of the oath which came after the Torah appoints the Son having been perfected forever. So you see, now he becomes the Torah of the Spirit. So that now we have no excuse to walk out the Torah according to the Spirit. Do you understand? And so this is the one that is being presented to us here. Yeah. The Torah of the Spirit. He was the Torah in the flesh. He became the Torah in the flesh. And now he works it in us in order to become set apart unto him. So let's look at Titus 2. Let's look at Titus chapter 2. So that we may see what Yeshua is coming to do so that we have the fuller picture because everything is understanding what Yeshua is doing. And these scriptures keep being repeated. Repetition solidifies truth within our hearts. Listen to what he says. For the saving grief gift of Elua, so the saving grace of Elua, uh, sorry, Titus 2 from verse 11, we're going to read from verse 11 to 14. And it says, For the saving gift of Elua has appeared to all men. So he was the gift that was given to all men. He was the door in the outer court that was open for all men. He was the one that we've gone through. We've, he is the one that paved the way for us. He was the one. He's the door to the... He's the door that opens for salvation. For the saving gift of Elua has appeared to all men, instructing us to renounce wickedness. So you see, we cannot continue in our flesh ways once we've truly received Yoshua. When Yoshua has truly been made manifest in you by the Ruach of Yahuwah, and if you do not have the Ruach of Yahuwah, then I will pray, and, uh, then you need to pray until you say, Father, fill me with your Ruach HaKodesh, please, Abba Yahuwah. I can't just have given my life to Yoshua and stay there. You need to be filled with the Ruach of Yahuwah and go one step further and say, and fill me with the fire 
so that fire burns within me. Instructing all men to renounce wickedness and worldly lusts, to live sensibly, righteously, reverently in this present age. Is that how we are living? The fact that we've received the Oshua, that we renounce wickedness. So everything that is wicked, we renounce. We renounce worldly lusts. We are not chasing after the lusts of the flesh and the pride of life and all that this world wants to offer us. We live sensibly. We live righteously. We live the set-apart life reverently in this present age. Now listen. Looking for the blessed expectation. So we're living like this while we're looking for the blessed expectation and the esteem appearance of the great Alua and our Savior, Messiah, Yeshua, because that's our expectation. Don't worry about what this world has got to offer you. If you perish, you perish. It doesn't really matter. You're going to be able to be with him anyway. For the one who dies is going to be with him if he dies in him. But listen to verse 14. Who gave himself for us. So understand, he's already given himself for us. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness lawlessness what is lawlessness lawlessness is the word anomia which is one without torah one that was lawless that didn't have the torah that wasn't keeping the ways of torah because they were trying to do it of the flesh and they kept not being able to do it in the flesh because they weren't being able to be able to do it by the spirit of yahuwah and to cleanse for himself a people his own possession ardent for good works those are the people he's raising up that's his priesthood and so we will continue next week as we are going to go deeper in this revelation that is being given to us and so praise the father because this is a lot already to take in this is a lot already to digest so i just thank abba father because we must be able to understand who your sure is who is the one opening the scroll? Who is the one that was spoken of in chapter 4? Who is this one that we are to behold? Who is this one that has come to be the lawgiver? And now we want to turn around and say, he's come to do away with everything. Wow, how deceived we are. When he is the lawgiver in his actual flesh, this is everything who he is. And he rose up in that tribe to become that which was already prophesied by Yaakov Israel, that from his tribe he was going to be the one that was going to be the scepter given to, that was going to rule, that was going to reign, that there was going to be a kingdom coming from him. So thank you, Abba Father. I thank you, my Father, for this word. And I thank you for that which you are doing in this hour. Oh, Father, to be able to have the deeper understanding and the deeper revelation of what your sure has come to do for us, understanding difficult scriptures that we take out of context because we read a little thing here and a little thing there. And this is what they do in the church. They read a little verse from Hebrews. They read a little verse from Romans. They read a little verse from Corinthians. They read these little verses from that comes from Shaul, Paul. And then they take it totally out of context. But when we understand that we have a foundation. And we have the beginning of the book. And we have the end of the book. And the beginning of the book is laying our foundation and the end of the book is opening up to us everything to understand what has he come to do already from the beginning. He was already the king of Salem. He was already that sovereign of Salem, one like the son of Yahuwah. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I thank you for our high priest. I thank you for the one who is worthy to open the scroll to open these seals and my father these seals are being opened right now one after the other and these things 
are manifesting before us and you have a people that you've spoken of that you have said there will be a people that is for a times times half a time that are having to shine that are going to have to bring many to righteousness that are going to have to stand in these last days that they will have little strength because they're going to go through many things but yet those those tests and those trials will be good for them why because it helps them to endure because they need to endure what is coming. And so Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you. I thank you for the deep revelation that you are opening up to us in this hour for us to understand the fullness of that which you are wanting to manifest in our lives because we need to understand the captain of the army of hosts because when the time comes, he's the one that needs to be our deliverer, because we need to put on deliverance. And what do we put on as deliverance if not Yeshua, who has already conquered and delivered? He's already conquered the grave. O oh, death, where is your sting? Death has nothing on us. But if we do not put him in his rightful place, then if we do not know what we're going to stand for, then we're going to fall for whatever's going to come our way. But when we know who we stand for and we know who stands with us, wow, how much easier it is to endure and to stand in the days ahead. So I praise and I thank you, Father, for this word. In Yahshua's name, Amen. <laughs>